This is the story in one slide. Um, of, this is Lego's entire sales history since their founding in 1932. They started as a, a small carpenter shop in 1932 in, in Billund, Denmark, a town with uh, three hours of nothing in every direction, still to this day. And then over the first um, 46 years, uh, really grew very slowly and, and steadily. And then uh, the, the, um, the, the son of the founder took over and then the grandson of the founder took over in 1977-78. Um, he did some things which launched it on this amazing growth period for about 15 years here um, in the 80s and early 90s, where they doubled in size every five years for 15 years. Um, and then they had a stagnant period in the 90s. Uh, they uh, suffered their first loss as a company in 1998. They brought in a turnaround expert um, who started innovating. And then between 1999 and 2002, they just innovated and it all worked until it didn't. In 2003, they suffered a crisis. Uh, they, uh, uh, they were almost bankrupt. Uh, they considered liquidating the company or selling it off to a competitor. They, they flew out to California to see if Mattel was interested in buying them. Lego as we knew it almost ceased to exist. But then over the next couple of years, they, well, they brought in a new management team. They changed the way they manage innovation. Around 2007, everything started to click. And for the last five years, the company has been growing sales at 24% per year, every year for the past five years, and growing profits even faster at 40% per year, every year for the past five years. Here, just briefly, um, is, is all the ways in which LEGO has put some guidance and structure around innovation. Right, they've changed their process. They've, they've tightened up the palette of elements and put the design um, lab in charge, those, those three guys with 100 years experience. Um, they have a community organizer to structure the community so that they're getting the most from it. Um, they've structured the whole uh, organization around this innovation matrix and they force teams to think through how they're going to get multiple complementary different types of innovation. And there's tons of other processes and tools and roles and other things that guide and focus innovation. Innovation, to make it profitable, requires giving your teams the space to be creative, but also the direction to deliver profitably. And that's what Lego is really good at. You know, they're good at creating that balance where teams do have the space to be creative, but also the direction to deliver. And so, you know, going back to this list, um, you know, yes, they're customer driven, but like with Mindstorms, they're interacting with their customers in a whole different way. Um, they're hiring diverse and creative people, but they're also hiring lots of people whose job it is to be focused and directive, you know, who's, who keep those people in line and, and, and focused on the right things. They're, they look for blue ocean, but actually what they found is that in, uh, in the construction toy market, they're the shark, and sharks love red ocean. And when they went back, they own 80% of that very profitable market. Um, yes, they're developing a full spectrum of innovation, but they're using the innovation matrix to make sure that it, uh, they, they complement each other. Um, they are opening innovation, but they've learned it's a new management skill. They, the uh, innovation culture that they have is very much, it's, you know, before it was just focused on let's do new cool stuff. Now it's let's do a new cool, you know, profitable fire truck police station. Um, and overall, um, you know, thinking out of the box almost put Lego out of business. Going back in the box has uh, created a, a, a tremendous success.